Hello everyone, my name is Kiska and welcome to the first ever voiceover video on my channel. Today I would like to show you a short review of these uh, Japanese watercolors that I just got for my birthday and to show you the whole process of me setting up a new palette of these watercolors. They are the Turner Artists watercolors and this is their set of 24 15 milliliter tubes. They are an artist grade watercolors and should be highly pigmented and very transparent and light fast. So I'm actually quite uh, curious how they will turn out. The set was ordered for me from jacksonsart.com, I'll put the link in the video description down below. And the original price was 66 pounds, which is around 87 US dollars. They are packed in this very modest but quite sturdy paper box. And the top side says Turner Artists Watercolor, 24 color set, and there's also a short poem. You can pause the video right here if you want to read the poem. And there's no more interesting information on the box. Only this side says that there are 24 15 ml tubes in this box. The box I received was a little bit scratched, as you can see in this close-up shot. But that's not a problem for me at all. The paints inside are in perfect condition. And the back of the box is just plain white, as you can see. So, let's quickly take off this plastic strip and let's open a box. And these are the paints in the set. Rose Red, Quinacrid on Magenta, Pearl Red, Permanent Scarlet, Naples Yellow, Permanent Gamboge, Permanent Yellow, Permanent Lemon, Olive Green, Phalo Green, Sep Green, Hookah's Green, Turquoise Blue, Cerulean Blue, Phalo Blue, Ultramarine, Maya Blue, Dioxazine Violet, Yellow Ochre, Venetian Red, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Ivory Black and Chinese White. On the front of the tube themselves, you can see your brand logo and name, identification number of the color, in this case 68, pricing series. I believe the Turners have four pricing series, A, B, C and F, A being the cheapest and F being the most expensive. And then there's color name, Quinacridon Magenta. On the back side, there's some safety information and manufacturer's address here in the bottom. And in the top part, we can see the pigment, light fastness, transparency and volume information. I'm gonna stop the video right here for a sec and explain you the Turner's labeling system. So, at the Turner's website, you can find a color sheet with all the colors in their watercolor collection and labels for some of the pigments they use. For example, as you can see here, PR122 stands for Pigment Red 122 or Pigment Red Quinacridone. I'll put a link to this sheet down below in the video description. Turner offers 148 colors in their watercolor range, 65 of those being single pigmented. And in this 24 tube set that I have, there are 17 single pigmented colors, which is quite awesome actually. So when you mix up the colors, they won't go that easily muddy. Uh, five colors are made out of two pigments, namely Sep Green, Hookah's Green, Naples Yellow, Chinese White and Ivory Black. And only two colors are made out of three pigments, Permanent Gamboge and Olive Green. For the light fastness, Turner uses a three star rating system. Three stars stand for excellent, two for good and one for fair light fastness. And if there's no star at all, it means that the light fastness is poor. In the 24 tube set, most of the colors have excellent light fastness, which is absolutely amazing for their price. And only two of them, namely Dioxazine Violet and Permanent Scarlet, have light fastness rated as good. I actually plan to make my own light fastness test in the future, so you can leave a like if you want to see this video in the future. And finally, the transparency is labeled with A, B or C. A meaning transparent, B meaning semi-transparent and C meaning opaque. Uh, 16 of the tubes in the 24 set are labeled as transparent, 
seven colors are semi-transparent and only the Venetian red is rated as opaque, so we'll see about that in a sec. Let's have a look at another tube. Here you can see the dioxazine violet, which is made out of PV23, pigment violet 23, and has only two stars for light fastness. Or here is the sap green, which is made out of two pigments, pigment green 36 and pigment yellow 110. Alright, I have my empty half pens and empty palette ready, so let's get into it. First of all, I labeled all of my half pens with a permanent marker, which by the way smudged on me after a while anyway. And on one side I wrote Turner to identify the brand and on the opposite side I wrote each color's number and name. I labeled like this every single half pen before I started filling them with paint and this is what they looked like when I had all of my half pens ready to be filled. I filled each half pen with the corresponding color and some of the paints like this Chinese white for example they were quite separated from the binder. By the way, Turner uses gum arabic as their binder. So I used an opened paper clip to mix the paint up and I also did it to make the paint look neater in the pens. And by the way, it looks like it takes just a couple of seconds to fill each, each half pen, but it took me like over an hour to fill all of these up. It's quite a tedious process. Yeah, and it was quite difficult for me to squeeze the paints out with just one hand, so my left hand was blocking the view constantly, so I had to edit it all out. So sorry for this supposedly satisfying part of the video being so short. And yeah, the paints pushed the paints around my cutting mat like this all the time, which made the pouring even more painful. Oh, and when the paint sticked out of the tube like this, I just simply pushed on the sides of the tube, just like this, to create a little vacuum inside so the paint would be sucked back into the tube. Before I decided I want this particular brand of watercolors as a birthday gift, I've of course made some research and there are not many reviews on these watercolors on the internet but I understood that the Turner tubes often happen to have air bubbles inside them which is really bad because you get less pigment than what you paid for and I think that at least one fourth of my tubes had air bubbles inside which I definitely do not appreciate but still even if they all were like 12 milliliter tubes, the price would still be almost unbeatable. Yeah, sometimes the colors just burst out of the tube when I opened it and some of the pigments poured onto the cap, so I tried to scrape it out as much as I could with the paper clip. Alright, you enjoy the rest of the pouring and I'm gonna just keep quiet for a while. Yep, and enjoy some royalty free music you've definitely never heard before, like a thousand times. After over an hour of struggle I finally had all of the pens full of paint. I left the pens on the top of my wardrobe for around 3 days to dry out and this is what they look like afterwards. Some of the paints like this permanent gamboge or the hookah's green, they kind of gaped. I don't know how else to say that, they just dried with the hole inside like this. 
other paints dried with a crack inside, like this permanent scarlet or Venetian red, but they still stick to the pens well. And some of the paints just sank like this, no cracking, no gaping, and this is Quinacridone Magenta and Ultramarine, I believe. The only thing that disappointed me is this ivory black. It dried out so much that barely any pigment is left in the pan. And yeah, a day later the dry pen just falls right out of the pan. That's really disappointing for an artist grade watercolor. I think I'll have to refill this one and probably add some honey in it to make it less crumbly. Okay, so now I gotta decide on how to organize these colors in the palette. I sorted all the pens into rows, in no particular order, just with their number facing me and then I took my Faber-Castell Pit artist pen and wrote the numbers of the paints on a piece of paper and then I just made a quick little color swatches and cut all of them and started organizing them. I think this process is actually quite satisfying to watch, so I'll just let you enjoy it. Alright, I had my pen sorted out, so I grabbed my empty palette and took out the center tray. I bent all the metal holder thingies, like, inwards and started putting all of the pens inside. This is how the pens look like in a palette from closer view. And now to the swatching part of the video. I prepared the color swatch card in advance and it was just missing the black strips for the opacity test, so I added those with my pit pen. And then I labeled every single swatch window with a color's name, light fastness rating, and pigment information. I added the colors number two. And I labeled like this all the little boxes as you can see. Now to the best part of the video. So I started by putting a drop of water in each of the pens to help the pigments loosen up. And here you can see me swatching all the colors, which you don't see because I cut it out of the video, is that in between each swatch I dried the swatch card with my hair dryer so the colors wouldn't bleed into each other. 
Alright, so we have here permanent lemon, permanent yellow, permanent gamboge, olive green, sap green, hocus green. Phalo green blue shade Turquoise blue Cerulean blue Phalo blue green shade Ultramarine Maya blue Dioxys in violet Quinacridone magenta Rose red Pyrrole red Permanent scarlet Venetian red Burnt Amber Burnt Sienna Yellow Ochre Naples yellow Chinese white and ivory black So I finished the color swatching, let the swatch card dry up and then I was like Oh no, these two colors would definitely look much better if they were in the opposite order So I took a knife and carefully cut those two boxes out, took a piece of tape and then put them in the opposite order The white edges of the cut paper were showing through, so I fixed that with my pit pen. Yeah, and then I saw how it looked like and I was like, hell no. So I took a new piece of tape and put the swatches back into their original place. And well, that was nice 10 minutes of wasted time. Congratulations to myself. Here is a close-up look at all the wonderful colors. My phone is not picking up all the details I'd like, but still, you can see that all of the paints are really highly pigmented, maybe except for the Maya Blue. The Venetian Red is quite opaque, but that was to be expected. Naples Yellow and of course the White, yeah, they are a bit more opaque too. But overall, I love these colors. As a last step, I took packing tape and just simply sealed and waterproofed the swatch card to make it a bit more durable. Ah, 
I pushed all the air bubbles away with my bone folder and used it to seal the edges too. And then I just replicated away the excess tape and I was done. Oh, by the way, for the sake of recording, I took the middle insert of the palette off to make nicer shots for you. So I just pushed the metal rod back inside the hinges and voila, it's done. After finishing the palette setup, I actually refilled the pens of camera once again and here is a close-up look. Oh yeah, and I added a bit of honey to the ivory black and it helped with the crumbling, but it started to smell weird, like bad weird. It reminds me a lot of yeast, so I hope it doesn't affect the quality of the paint, but it shouldn't. I'll see how it will turn out in the long run. Alright, so my turners are ready for use. And I have my swatch card ready too, I can simply stick it inside a palette and ta-da! So thank you for watching my video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button, it helps my channel a lot. And you can check out my previous videos too. And I'll see you next time. Bye!